Just a fair warning, this video contains excessive amounts of the Festool Domino. Five hundred and sixty of them to be exact, and that means one thousand one hundred and twenty domino mortises. All right, so as you can see from the thumbnail, we have a big one today, and actually, I only have a quarter of it here because I'm actually still putting finish on the rest of it, so it isn't technically done yet. And I guess at this point, neither of us know if I'm actually going to get this thing done. So stick around to the end of the video to find out. Anyways, this piece is a large eight foot by eight foot Baltic birch bookcase. Say that three times fast. And there are some interesting things going on in this piece, so let's just get into it. I'm making this for a local client and they sent me the geometry that they wanted and the rough size that they wanted. And we also decided to break the entire piece up into four different quadrants so that there's the option for different configurations depending on what the customer wanted. So once I had the overall design and dimensions in my head, I went into Fusion to get the spacing for all the shelves dialed in and to just get a 3D rendering of the whole thing. The math was a little tricky for these. Let's calculate but I eventually got everything looking right. And at this point, the only thing left to do was get started on the real thing. So I went and picked up a bunch of plywood and started cutting it up. First thing I did was cut the outer case for each quadrant because that would dictate the size of the rest of the parts needed. So I started by cutting everything to rough length and width. then cut all of these panels to final dimension and one thing here is that when I'm cutting up a bunch of plywood I like to use my forest chop master blade it just leaves a really nice edge and doesn't cause a lot of tear out on the veneer I'll leave a link to that blade in the description I needed a total of 16 equal size panels to make up the entire outer case of each quadrant. So with those panels cut to their final dimensions, I could then cut in the first of many, many dominoes into the miters. If only I knew what I had in store for me coming up. Actually, I guess I did know, I just didn't really comprehend it or something. Kind of like how we can't comprehend the size of the universe. The size and age of the cosmos are beyond ordinary human understanding. Once that was done, I could start cutting the horizontal shelf pieces and the length of these was determined by the inner dimension of the mitered case that I had just finished cutting.
the horizontal shelves cut to length, I could then cut in the next round of dominoes to hold those in place. And real quick before I keep going, I wanna kinda just talk about why I chose dominoes instead of dados for the joinery on this piece. And there were a couple of reasons, but the main one was aesthetics. Because this bookcase wasn't getting edge banding, I didn't want to be able to see the actual dado joint on the front of all the shelves. And I considered doing a stopped dado like I have in the past. But I wasn't really sure if that was going to be more time consuming than dominoes. And at the end of it all, I'm pretty sure the time difference was negligible, but at the beginning, it felt like dominoes were gonna be quicker, so that's what I went with. So in order to cut the dominoes level with each other on each side of the cabinet, I clamped the two cabinet sides back to back and ran a straight edge across both of them to make sure all the mortises were perfectly lined up. the mortises cut into the cabinet sides as well as the ends of the shelves I could dry fit everything together. So with the horizontal shelves in place I could then measure the actual piece to get an accurate dimension for how tall all of my vertical dividers needed to be. then cut all the dividers to their proper heights and then went back to cutting more mortises. More mortises. And I did these the exact same way as I did the horizontal shelves. Just this time I started with the bottom panel of each quadrant and matched it back to back with the next shelf up and then just kept doing this two at a time until I worked my way all the way up to the top panel. then dry fit the entire quadrant together to make sure everything fit properly. Then immediately take it all apart and get it ready for glue. Maybe if this furniture thing doesn't work out, I can go into dentistry. Anyway, at this point, the most important thing was to make sure all of the parts were labeled properly so that when I went to glue everything up, I had everything oriented the proper way. And 
And with that, I was ready to glue everything together. And I did the glue ups in two stages. The first stage, I glued the inner grid together. Then once that was dry, I could glue on the outer cabinet. The glue ups got trickier as I went along because of course I started with the easiest quadrant which is the lower left and has the least amount of joints and I ended with the upper right quadrant that has the most amount of joints. Luckily Jonathan Katz Moses swung by and lended me a much needed hand and some extra clamps and the nice part was I didn't even have to sound the funnel to get him over here. So once all the quadrants were glued up, it was time for finish. And for this one, I decided to do a spray finish, which I don't often do, but figured it would be the easiest way to go with the size of this piece and the complexity. And Jonathan and I decided to throw together a cheap kind of spray booth. And Jonathan actually did a whole video on putting this together. And I'll put a link to that in the description. So that's where I'm currently at. I actually need to run over and spray another coat in a couple minutes and then get this one over there and get finish on that and I'll be pretty much done. I'm also gonna add in some threaded inserts to hold the whole thing together once it's all stacked up. So I guess if everything goes well and I get this thing finished, the video will continue. And if it's a total fail, I don't know, it might just uh, cut to black. Nah, I'm just kidding. I got it finished and fully assembled and I got it done just in time for delivery, which is today. Let's take a look. So there you go, a gigantic geometric modular Baltic birch bookcase. Say that three times fast. This thing was a ton of work and I am stoked with how it came out and I am very happy that it is done. And as always, thank you for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this one. Let me know what you think. And of course, until next time, if you ever have the urge to build a gigantic geometric modular Baltic birch bookcase, just don't do it.